The first day back to business since the fall of Hosni Mubarak in Egypt, the country's central bank is selling over a billion dollars in treasury bills, but it was forced to pay higher yields despite the easing of the tensions there. What does this say about Egypt's economy as it tries to get back on its feet? Joining us now is Ed Butowski, the managing partner of Chapwood Capital Investment Management. Ed, good to see you. Um, the yield on this was 11.65. That's the highest yield in a couple of years. I take it, sure. obviously, the, the greater the instability, the greater the risk, the higher the yield. As an investment, is Egypt too risky? Uh, there's absolutely no question. I, I'd love to know who is buying these bonds. I mean, I'm surprised the yields aren't even higher. And then given the news we just had about the dissolving of parliament, I mean, basically the government has been dissolved. Who in their right mind, when you have all these choices around the world, would go out and buy bonds that are backed by Egypt? I just don't get it, Greg. Well, Ed, and that brings up the larger picture here in terms of capitalization. Right. Will Egypt affect world markets? Well, Egypt is a very, very small part of the world markets. The disruption that Egypt will cause, you know, could have been as a result of the pipeline being shut down and the transportation of oil. But in terms of market capitalization and uh, what it, you know, where it stands in the world markets, I mean, it's less than, I believe it's less than 0.05% of the world markets, and it's a third of 1% of all the emerging markets. It's a very, very tiny market. The biggest concern is oil production, and not so much production, but the transfer of uh, oil through the pipeline. So, uh, again, it's not a major, major player in terms of the world markets, but it could be a major disruption to that whole area. Yeah, and it, about 40% of the world's oil actually goes through the Suez, right? So, I mean, we could see, are, are you envisioning, mm -hmm. because of all of this instability and uncertainty, higher gasoline prices here in America for us consumers at the pumps? Yeah, well, I'll tell you, Greg, you know, I've said it many times. We're going to see high oil prices. We're going to see higher gasoline prices. I don't think it's because of this. I think we're going to see it just because of the worldwide demand uh, that, that's taken place. This is not going to help things, uh, but I don't think this is going to be a major disruptive force at, at this very moment. I mean, this is still unraveling. It's still coming to be, but I definitely see oil prices going higher. This could play a part in it, but uh, again, I'd like to know who is buying those bonds. You know, yeah. I'm not making a political statement here, but I'm curious. Why is someone buying them? What kind Countries are buying them, and who's buying those bonds? Well, or large institutional investors. Speaking of which, you know, uh, this right. is now a, a, a global economy, and, and many mm -hmm. more people over the course of the last decade are investing in developing markets, emerging markets, and so forth. Um, are investors, mm -hmm. though, given what's happened over the course of the last three weeks, are they pulling out of these emerging market funds? Yes, they are, Greg, and I'm happy you brought that up because when you look at international investing, it's broken down in developed markets, emerging markets, and then there's another market called frontier markets, which are even smaller countries. Egypt falls on the much smaller side of the emerging markets. You are absolutely seeing a lot of fast money coming out of the emerging market funds, and I think it's a very bad idea. I think it's very important that you have emerging markets in your portfolio and leave them there. A lot of those markets are going to become developed markets, and they're right. going to continue to rise, and I would absolutely not be pulling out of those emerging market funds without no absolutely no question at all stay invest in emerging market funds and if they've dropped which they have buy right. them on dips i think you need to be a long-term investor there right. greg good good advice last quick question i mean given all of sure. the profligate spending and our ballooning right. debt and deficit can you yes. do we expect a really ugly inflationary period on our horizon there's, it's, it's written. I mean, it's going to happen. We have way too much money chasing, you know, the, a finite number of products and services. Inflation's coming. Stay away from government bonds in the United States. Inflation's coming and uh, be prepared for it. But absolutely, Greg, we will see very, very high inflation rates very soon. You, you cannot engage in that kind of spending Sorry. and borrowing without it causing hyperinflation. Ed Butowski, thanks very much.